usually people see me speaking behind a podium or in a chair in a fancy office, etc. And they see this, uh, this gentleman there with a press shirt and a tie. And um, I get a feeling at times they think I was a person who was born to privilege, uh, who never really knew what it was to work hard. Um, so I guess there's just a couple things I'd, I'd like to share. Uh, the first one was that, um, boy, in my family, my father owned a small paving company. Um, once you turned 11 uh, in your summers, you spent those summers shoveling blacktop. Um, so from the time I was 11, I would get out there, I had to be um, at our shop by 5.30 in the morning. We typically worked about 6 o'clock at night. I'm sure we, my father broke every, every labor law out there. Um, but he started to be out at 35 cents an hour. And um, I remember going home at night, um, sometimes crying, saying, why is my father doing this to me? Why is my father doing this to me? And um, later on, as I grew older, he would share he, that he wanted me to learn to work hard, that he wanted me to realize the benefits of an education. And so I would be encouraged to go to college so I could work with my mind and not with my back. And for, for that, I'm, I'm really appreciative. Along that same note, when I was growing up, this was in the third grade, I'll never forget this, and, and I, I put a lot of blame on myself for this as well. I'd heard my third grade teacher speaking with another teacher saying, you know, I don't know about Daryl. He, he must have some kind of learning disability. Um, and that, that really impacted me. Um, I stopped trying. I accepted the limits <laughs> that were placed on me by this offhand comment of this educator. You know, growing up in my household, you listen to your teachers, right? They're always right. And um, so I stopped trying. It wasn't till, oh, my junior year in college when I met this gentleman, uh, Dr. Peter Lane. He was a uh, a special assistant to the chancellor at the University of North Texas where he said, Daryl, whoever sold you this bill of goods didn't know what they're talking about. You have a great capacity to learn and, and he was very gracious too with regards to my efforts to help others. Um, it was at that point that I did start trying again and I was on the dean's list the rest of the way through college. What's so sad, what's so tragic about that is that all the knowledge I could have acquired in those years through the third grade, all the way through junior year in college, I missed out on. And that's, that's the educational experience you can't just go back and take again. Uh, and sadly, I accepted the limits that others placed on me. So now when I go around and I do speak to um, groups of students, etc., that is always one of my central themes, never to allow others to define you and never accept the limitations they may try intentionally or unintentionally try to place upon you. Well, we've gone around uh, speaking extensively on the challenges that um, Hispanic immigrants are facing these days. Truth be told, they're not unlike um, the issues that were posed by previous immigrant waves. What's really made things more challenging, though I'd like to say these days, is um, technology and the ability for technology to extend out misinformation out there. Uh, let's take Milwaukee and Wisconsin uh, as a point in fact. Um, the majority of Latinos here are native born. They were born right here in Wisconsin. Yet, and I don't believe this is intentionally for most, for most individuals, but there is an assumption that if somebody appears to be, have a darker complexion, et cetera, that they are Latino and as such are undocumented or illegal, as some would like to call them. Um, unfortunately, we have another individual that calls Latinos a much harsher group of names. And, and it's, it's sad to see, you know, even when uh, I go with my wife, we'll go, <laughs> I'll join her sometimes at the, the supermarket uh, shopping for food, you'll see people choose a slightly longer line just because there are people of a darker complexion in one line. Um, that's the sad reality that we, we still live in. Or if you see people um, downtown, uh, women in particular tend to hold on to their handbags a little tighter when a certain person walks by. 
Um, so that, that's one misperception that um, once again is, is being perpetrated or being shared on a wide basis. The second one is the misperception that Latinos don't want to learn English. Truth be told, study after study show that Latinos are learning English at a faster rate than any other immigrant wave ever has. What's slowing us down, if anything, is the limited access to resources that, we, that Latinos have to learn English. Um, our biggest challenge, sincerely, is trying to keep Spanish alive in our families because it's, we're seeing that second generation is losing their Spanish skills at a, at a very high rate. So we look at being bilingual or multilingual as a true benefit to the individual, to our state, to our country. It's important that we, we should encourage that, not discourage it.